Good morning. We welcome you in Jesus' name as we come to worship our Lord and Savior here at St. John Lutheran Church. Uh, we're glad that you're here today. Today we're excited for our uh, baptism this morning, actually, of uh, two uh, children for Michael and Eliana, and so we're excited about that for those ba baptism today. So, Also today, uh, Katie Dina is uh, playing piano for us this morning as uh, uh, Dorian Sutherland is out of town, and so we're thankful for uh, Katie to fill in for us this morning. I invite you to stand as we begin our time of worship. Today we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Since the beginning of time, God has revealed his will to seek and to save that which was lost. No matter how often we have entered the gates of God's place, whether often or rarely, because of our sin, we are all lost, on our own, and helpless. Let us therefore approach God in humility to receive his forgiveness. O oh God, I believe in you. O oh Lord, I trust your promise to save me. Forgive me for my sins in thought, word, and deed. Come to me, though I am not worthy. Come to me with your promise, with your touch of forgiveness, healing, help, and life. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. God has come to you in grace and mercy. Upon this your confession, I as a called and ordained servant of the word, and by his authority, forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing our first hymn together. I'd like to invite the family forward for our baptism. <laughs> yeah, come on up here on either side. Way? Yep. Why don't you guys slide on over this side too? Yep. Perfect. <laughs> Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So, Eliana, receive the sign of the cross on your forehead. And Michael will do that as well. Receive the sign of the cross on your forehead. Let us hear in the Holy Gospel of Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now for our sponsors. From ancient times, the church had observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. After Michael and Eliana have been baptized, you are at all times to remember them in your prayers, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them in regular worship and faithful reception of the Lord's Supper and to be an example of them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for our neighbor. Is it your intention then to serve Michael and Eliana as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, say yes with the help of God. Okay, let's continue then with saying the Lord's Prayer together. Do you think we can say the Lord's Prayer together? Okay, let's do that. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You know, that's okay, actually, if he wants to wander around a little bit up here. You just want to explore, don't you? You're just up for that today, okay? One more part, and then we're going to be ready for your part here for just a second. So we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, um, and this is uh, what we're going to express together through these questions. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Okay, Michael, are you ready for this? Are you ready to get a little wet? Okay. Hey, buddy. Okay, we're up for this. Here we go. Let's see. You're a big boy, so I'm going to try it this way. Michael, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That was fun, wasn't that? Here we go. Yep, let's go back to Mom now. Okay. Eliana, if you would lean your head forward here. Eliana, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I just messed up all your makeup, didn't I? <laughs> there you go. That one's for you. There you go. <laughs> okay. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new life that you've given to Michael and to Eliana. We pray that you would continue to sustain them. Thank you for this wonderful gift that you've given to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Another thing that we have for uh, time of baptism is these candles. And these remind us that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Hopefully the fans won't blow that out. Eliana, I think you can hang on to yours. And I'll let one of these guys over here hang on to that one for Michael. Okay, we continue now with the welcome. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as a fellow child of God and Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praise of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. And we do. Michael and Eliana, you have joined our family here. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this new life that you have granted to Michael and to Eliana. We pray that you would continue to sustain them throughout their life until they come to be with you in eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace be with you. Amen. You may be seated. You can blow out those candles and you may be seated. There's actually boxes back there. We're going to continue now with the reading of our scriptures. Morning. We begin with the Old Testament reading in Genesis, the ninth chapter, verses 8 through 17. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. It is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from Ephesians. Chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened and power through his spirit and in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading for today comes from Mark chapter 6. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side 
to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astonished, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it, were made well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we join in singing our next hymn together.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts gathered here today be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today in our text, we get what Mark has kind of been doing all throughout his writing of the gospel is, well, he's trying to show how people recognize Jesus and the different reactions that people have to Jesus. And sometimes the reactions are a little surprising to us uh, in ways that we're not quite sure about. The crowds that we would think would respond to Jesus don't, and others that you would think not, they do respond to Jesus. But here today we get this in Mark chapter 6. This is just after the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus sends his disciples off in a boat across the lake, and then we see the reaction of both the disciples, but then also the crowds when they see Jesus. So let's begin maybe at the end point of this text that we heard today. And what we encounter here are these crowds, the crowds of people that are gathering to see Jesus. As Jesus comes with his disciples to uh, uh, Gennesaret, that region of the Gennesaret, it, the text here says through, uh, through Mark that these crowds followed after him. They flocked after him. They figured out where he was going, and they, they would be there with him. They wanted to see him. They wanted to hear him. But most importantly, they wanted to be healed by Jesus. Mark says that they would bring out their sick. Wherever Jesus went, they would bring out their sick, place him in the marketplace so that even if they could only touch his clothing, they would be healed. So their reaction to Jesus is one of hope. Seeing Jesus as one who is there for them, one who can heal them, one who can change their lives. Whether they recognize Jesus as the true Son of God who's going to die and rise again for them, they don't see that yet. But they see something special and miraculous. They see hope in Jesus. They're excited when he comes to town. So excited that that kind of changes everything in the town. I think everything would stop in that town when Jesus came. And so they find hope in him, security in him. They find a way to heal them of these diseases that they would have, sicknesses that would ail them maybe for the rest of their life. But Jesus is this healer, this one who brings hope. But then we turn our attention back to the disciples, the disciples who had been with Jesus, who had seen him calm the storm, who had seen him feed the 5,000, who were sent out and actually were performing miracles themselves in the towns that they would go to, proclaiming that the kingdom of God is at hand. Well, Jesus sends them into a boat to go across the other side while he stays and prays. And while they're on the lake, the winds turn to a direction that was not beneficial to them. They weren't making any headway to get across the lake. And they were stuck there in the middle of the night. And so then Jesus comes and he walks on the water. And what's interesting here in the text that Mark records is he says that Jesus made to pass on by them. Seems a little strange. Why would Jesus pass on by them? I mean, wouldn't he just go to them and meet them at the boat? We have to remember that the audience that's hearing this gospel would have been very, very familiar with their Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, when God would appear to people, oftentimes it was in a type of situation where it says, the Lord passed by Moses when he goes onto the mountain, Elijah when he sees the Lord. It said the Lord passed by, and so it is a phrase that indicates that the Lord is going to make an appearance there. Obviously, a kind of sheltered appearance because we cannot endure the full glory of God. But that, I believe, is Mark kind of indicating here who Jesus is in his text, that he's coming to pass by the disciples. And the disciples' reaction to him are fear. I mean, these are the disciples who saw Jesus calm the storm. These are the disciples who went into the towns and, and preached. These are the disciples who just saw the feeding of the 5,000. But then Mark also adds in the text here that they didn't understand the feeding of the 5,000 that just happened, and their hearts, he said, were hardened. Now, that's a difficult phrase there, because oftentimes when we hear that phrase, we think of those who turn away from God. Those who reject God harden their hearts. 
But I don't think that's what Mark is indicating here. I think what he's indicating here in the hardened heart is our condition, our sinful condition. That our hearts are hard to the word of God, who cannot receive the word of God on our own. They were caught up in the anxiety of seeing what they thought was a ghost coming to them. They were caught up in the things of the world and were not ready to see Jesus, who he was. And that's the hardened heart. That sin that keeps us from seeing Jesus for who he is. But thanks be to God that, well, Mark says that here is even the answer to that. You notice how Jesus responds to his disciples? He says, take heart, do not be afraid, it is I. It is the power of God that opens our eyes to see him. It is the power of God that allows us to believe in him. It is the power of God that gives us faith in Jesus Christ. And so a popular phrase over there in our society right now has been faith over fear. And that's exactly what this is. The disciples are afraid. They let the things of this world cloud seeing Jesus in that moment. And so their faith is not seeing what is going on there. But the crowds are. The crowds are excited to see Jesus. Even if they don't fully understand him, their eyes are open to see something special is happening here. The groundwork is being laid to see that Jesus is going to be the one who's going to change all things. And so the crowds respond by bringing those who are in need of help to Jesus. And that's only a part of what Jesus does, that healing idea, that restoration. We know the rest of the story where he goes to the cross to die for us and to rise again to take away our sin, which then allows faith to believe in Jesus and puts away that fear. To me, it's a lot like going back to that Old Testament story of the rainbow. I mean, Noah encountered the destruction of the world, and he's sitting on that boat. And God, after all of this had happened, this tremendous event that had happened, puts that rainbow in the sky to remind him, to give him hope that God has a plan, and God is fulfilling his plan. I don't know if any of you were able to see a rainbow over this last week, but we definitely had enough rain to produce rainbows. And a lot of us probably dealt with some of that rain, the destruction that was there. Fortunately for us, not as bad as maybe some other places in the world that are dealing with floods. But when you see a rainbow, at least for me, when I see a rainbow, it's just a magical thing. I mean, the moment that you see it, you kind of want to just stop and look at it. You want to enjoy it. Because I believe, again, that's God's reminder to us that he is here for us. That he has a plan that figure out all things, even in the midst of something we might be afraid of for us. And so it is faith over fear. So Mark shows to us two different reactions of seeing Jesus or listening to him or encountering him. May our encounters with Jesus be built on faith to put away the fears of this world and to trust Jesus no matter what we encounter, no matter what we face. God is always there for us, to love us, to care for us, and to redeem us. Amen. We continue now by bringing forward our offering. I invite you to stand as we continue <coughs> excuse me, with the prayers of the church.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Eternal Father, O God, our Creator and Redeemer, we thank you that you have drawn us to yourself by the power of your word and our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For your promises of life and salvation, we give you praise and adoration as our God and Lord. Keep us in steady faith in you. Guide our steps in the ways of your life-giving word and make us to be ever more your people of hope, love, and life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, as you strengthen your early apostles by your very presence, so give strength and courage to church workers who continue in your service to this day. Guard and protect them from the assaults of the devil and bless their service in your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, give your blessing and guidance to all in authority and the service of government in our land and throughout the world. Cause them to pursue righteousness and justice in all their dealings, that we may live in prosperity and peace. Lord, in your mercy, give healing and comfort, O Lord, to all who are in trouble, danger, or illness. Lord, we pray for those who are in need of your healing touch, for Leonard and for Janet, for Bill and for Marty, for Estella, for Dennis, for June, for Chuck and for Victoria, for Carrie and for Kayla, for Joyce and for Jason, for Cindy and for Jelani, for Christy, for Art, for Sharon, for baby Claire and for Jim, for Danielle and for Jessica, for Matthew, for Roxanne, for Profe Maria, and for Gail. For these individuals, Lord, we pray that you would grant healing according to your grace and mercy. We also want to pray for Sue and Mike Heffron and family at the death of Sue's mother this last Sunday. Give them comfort and peace as they mourn her loss. Sustain their courage and faith in your mighty care. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we conclude our time this morning, let us pray together Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. Again, we're glad that you uh, worshiped with us today, and we continue with worships on Sundays and on Wednesdays. And uh, if you joined us online, too, we're glad that you joined us uh, today. Also, if you have any concerns or cares, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. There are multiple ways that you can do that, through the phone, through email. But uh, please reach out to us. That's what we're here for. And so if you have any concerns, have prayer requests, um, uh, let us know about those things. Our website is also a good place to get some information. And then also weekly, we have an email that we uh, send out. And so that has information as well. You can sign up on our uh, website for that. Or if you are here on, on Sunday or Wednesday, we also have it in uh, print form as well. We thank you, too, for your offerings, your gifts uh, given out of what God has truly blessed us with. We have multiple ways to give, but we thank you for that as we continue to sustain uh, the ministry here at St. John. Vacation time. Just want to let you know that myself and my family are going to be on vacation from August 1st until August 10th. So Pastor uh, Keith from St. Mark, just down the road here, will be filling in on those Sundays for us. And so we're glad that he's going to be able to do that because I'm actually filling in for him uh, in a hurry right out of here and to go uh, with their worship service down there. But it's great that we're able to share in that. So over those uh, next weeks, you can still um, reach out here or leave a message. Uh, there will be, we will respond to some of those messages, but I won't respond until I come back from vacation. But great time of year to kind of do that, to go on, on break, but just wanted to let you know that uh, August 1st through the 10th, I will be out of town. 
Any other announcements that we have in regards to our life together here? Okay, we're glad that you worship with us today, and congratulations to our two uh, uh, baptizees that as they were baptized today, and uh, we wish you a blessed day. We're going to finish with our final song together, When Peace Like a River. I invite you to stand.